Okay, so in previous videos, we defined what a group is and we looked at some examples. We looked at the integers mod n, we looked at the hedral groups, and we looked at the symmetric group. Um, in other words, the permutation group on n letters. And so just as a reminder what a group is, it's a set G together with an operation star. And in general, we write A star B just as A, B. Now, if you're dealing with a specific group, you might write that operation in there, be it multiplication or addition. But if you're dealing with an arbitrary group, you generally just put the letters next to each other. And it satisfies three axioms. So we've got this identity element, which we generally call E. And so EG is equal to GE, which is G, and that's for all elements G. And then every element G has an inverse that takes it back to the identity. And then finally, you've got this associativity property. So what I want to do now in this video is prove a couple of um, more is to prove a couple of properties that are true of groups in general. And the first one is uh, given a group G, the identity is unique. Good. So what we're gonna do is start by assuming that we have two identities. So let's suppose that E1 and E2 in G are both identities. And what we'll end up with is that E1 equals E2. And this is actually super short. So we'll start with E1. And notice, we'll multiply this by E2, so E1 times E2, and these two are equal because E2 is an identity. Great. But now we just view this in a slightly different way, and notice that this equals E2, and that's because E1 is an identity. So what we've done is shown that E1 is equal to 2. E2, in other words, um, there is only one identity. So we suppose there might be more than one, and we showed that those had to be equal. So there's only one identity in a group. Okay, great. I'm going to uh, clean up the board, and then we'll look at another one of these general properties. Okay, so the next property we want to prove is that inverses in a group are unique. So let's uh, suppose that we have an element A in our group G with inverses B and C. Okay, the fact that B and C are inverses of A gives us a bunch of equivalences like A times B equals the identity, and that's the same thing as B times A, and then A times C is the identity, and that's the same thing as C times A. So that's the definition of B and C being inverses of A. Great. So now we're going to do a pretty similar calculation to what we did with I uh, showing that the identity was unique. We're going to start with B, but now we're going to multiply B by the identity, but we'll multiply by, by the identity in this way. So this is the same thing as B times the identity, which is the same thing as B times AC, because we know AC is the identity. But now we can reassociate. This is the same thing as BA times C by the associativity property. But now we also know that B A is the identity because B and A are inverses. So that gives us um, E times C, which is the same thing as C. So now look at the extreme left hand and the extreme right hand side of this equation. And we've shown that if we have two inverses of an element A, they are in fact the same thing. In other words, there is only one inverse to any element of a group and the inverses are unique. Okay, so we've got a couple more of these general propositions to prove before the end of this video. Okay, so this next proposition we want to prove is sometimes called the shoes and socks theorem. So I'll let you decide why it's called the shoes and socks theorem. Just think about taking your shoes and socks off and on and what order you have to do that in. So this says that AB quantity inverse is the same thing as B inverse A inverse. Remember now, in general, we don't have commutativity, so we have to worry about the order. So maybe uh, this is... 
most easily seen by this fact. So if we take A, B times D inverse A inverse and reassociate this, we're going to get A, A, sorry, A, B, B inverse, A inverse. So that's what we get by reassociating. But these two cancel to the identity, giving us A, E, A inverse. But that gives us A, A inverse. But that gives us the identity. So what that tells us is that this and this are inverses of each other. But now since inverses are unique, we have A, B quantity inverse also times A, B equals the identity. So we know that's like true by definition, but what that does is makes this thing equal to this thing again because inverses are unique by what we proved in the last uh, proposition. Okay, we've got uh, one more of these before the end of this video. Okay, so the final property that we want to prove in this video is called the left cancellation property, and there is a right cancellation property too, which I'll let you guys prove on your own. It's just as simple as this one, and this says that if AB equals AC and A, B, and C are elements of some group, then B equals C. So all we do is start with AB equals um, AC, and then left multiply. by A inverse, so that gives us A inverse AB equals A inverse AC. But now notice by associativity, we have A inverse A times B equals A inverse A times C. But that's the same thing as B equals C because A times A inverse is the identity. Okay, so we've got it, um, the left cancellation rule, and notice uh, associativity was important in this case. We actually wouldn't have the left cancellation rule without associativity. All right, this is a great place to end the video.